Chris Brown took over the industry in record time, but nobody knew he was hiding a brutal violent side of himself. Brown is still in the music game, but he could end up behind bars again soon thanks to his dark past. Chris Brown got famous on accident. He started dancing as a two-year-old and was obsessed with pop stars like Michael Jackson, but he grew up in a tiny town in Virginia super far away from the bright lights of the music industry. His mom knew how talented he was and tried to support him, but at the same time, she was going through a divorce with Brown's dad, which made the situation more complicated. And back then is when all of his problems allegedly started. After his parents split up, Brown saw his mom's new boyfriend brutally beat her. In an interview with Giant Magazine in 2007, Brown said he told his mom, I just want you to know that I love you, but I'm going to take a baseball bat one day while you are at work and I'm going to kill him. He said that his mom's boyfriend terrified him constantly, and that was his first exposure to domestic violence. At the same time he was watching his mom getting beat, Chris's career popped off out of nowhere. A local production team came to his dad's gas station while they were looking for new artists to work with, and they put together a demo tape for him at just 13 years old. He moved to New York to work on his career. And just a year later, he signed a deal with Jive Records, who made Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake both famous. Chris dropped his debut album in 2005, and it was clear from the jump that he was going to be a star. He was only 16 years old, but sold over 150k in the first week and eventually went triple platinum. His second album popped off even more and almost hit 300k the first week. Brown's music was everywhere, and he got even more shine for working with charity programs and picking up a few acting jobs too. In 2008, he was named Billboard's Artist of the Year and it looked like Chris Brown was on track to becoming as big as his idol Michael Jackson. He had number one hits, multi-platinum records, sponsorships, and great PR from working with charities. But right before he was about to become a true superstar, Brown was involved in one of the most brutal attacks in pop culture history. Chris Brown had been linked to Rihanna in 2007 after she hit the stage with him at the MTV Video Music Awards. Not before long, they were officially dating. But in 2009, everything fell apart right before they were going to perform at the Grammys. Brown and Rihanna were riding in his rented Lambo when they got into a fight over a text Brown got from a woman he had hooked up with before. That's when Brown completely snapped and started attacking her. He allegedly slammed her head into the car window while punching and choking her, then bit her ear and threatened to kill her. Rihanna's face was unrecognizable after the fight, and she had to be hospitalized for treatment. When pictures of her leaked online, People couldn't believe that Chris Brown was capable of such a brutal attack. He was known as a nice dude who gave back to the community, and nobody knew about his dark side. The attack stayed in the headlines for weeks, and Brown said he contemplated suicide and didn't leave his house for three months after it happened. He pleaded guilty to felony assault later that year, but got off with nothing but a slap on the wrist. Instead of going to prison like most people would for almost killing their girlfriend, Brown was just given five years of probation, community service, and had to go through a domestic abuse program. Brown said, words cannot begin to express how sorry and saddened I am over what transpired. But it turns out that wasn't the first time he abused Rihanna. During his sentencing, CNN reported that they had had two domestic violence incidents before what went down in the car. At first, he couldn't be around Rihanna because a judge issued a restraining order against him. But after a few counseling sessions, the order was removed and they started dating on and off again. Rihanna might have been ready to move on, but that wasn't the end of the violence. In 2011, Brown went on Good Morning America and Robin Roberts pressed him over the Rihanna attack. Brown was so mad about the questions that he walked into his dressing room and started punching a window until he cracked it. Just a few months later, Brown got into a fight with Drake and his crew at a nightclub in New York. It's not clear how everything went down, but according to rumors, Chris Brown sent Drake some champagne and Drake sent a note back that said, I'm f***ing the love of your life. Bottles started getting thrown around and a San Antonio Spurs player named Tony Parker had to have surgery to get a piece of glass taken out of his eye. Nobody was arrested for the fight, but it wasn't long before Chris Brown was making headlines again. In January 2013, he got into a fight with Frank Ocean in the parking lot of a studio in Hollywood. They were allegedly beefing over a parking spot, and Brown allegedly punched Ocean and threatened to shoot him. Brown later sued Ocean and his cousin who was there too, but the situation ended up getting settled out of court. Chris Brown stayed out of trouble with the cops for a few years, but that changed a few months after the fight with Frank Ocean. His probation was revoked after a hit and run in July 2013, but the charges were later dropped. But then in October, he was arrested again on another assault charge after he broke a dude's nose who just wanted to take a picture with him. Attacking random people will usually get you locked up, especially if you're a known violent criminal. But Brown got off easy again and was released after just 48 hours. He did check himself in a rehab after it went down, but he got locked up in 2014 after the rehab facility kicked him out. He finally had to sit down for a while in jail. 
but it was only for 100 days. It was clear that Brown had some major issues going on, and during rehab, he was officially diagnosed with bipolar disorder and PTSD. Brown was granted an early release from jail, and a few months later, he pleaded guilty to another assault charge from 2013. He only spent two days in jail from what went down, but a few months later, he was involved in the deadliest situation yet. Brown wasn't supposed to leave LA County without getting permission from a judge, but in January 2015, he performed at a club in San Jose and at some point, shots started going off during the set. It's not clear exactly how it all happened, but five people got hit during the shooting and Brown's probation was revoked again. But he was back on the streets in no time, and in May 2015, he allegedly hit a dude in Vegas over a basketball game. The dude didn't press charges, but that wasn't the only trouble Brown had in 2015. That winter, he was supposed to be touring in Australia and New Zealand, but he canceled the whole thing a week before the first show because Australia's immigration minister said his visa would be denied over his criminal history. By 2016, it had been seven years since everyone found out how brutal Chris Brown could be. He had tons of reports against him, but somehow his career never took that big of a hit. He wasn't Michael Jackson famous like people thought he'd be back in the day, but he was still one of the highest selling singers in the world even after all the violence. Then in August 2016, a woman called the cops and said Brown had threatened her with a gun. The police showed up with a SWAT team and had a standoff with helicopters flying over his house. But eventually, the truth came out that the woman lied about the whole thing because Brown had kicked her out of his house. The woman might have been capping, but that same year, Brown's manager came out and accused him of brutally attacking him too. Brown hired Michael Gerges to help his PR after the Rihanna attack. But in June 2016, Gerges sued him for allegedly locking him in a room and punching him in the face and neck. Brown clapped back and said, This is getting mad and filing lawsuits because I fired them because they're stealing money. You're stealing money, pal. But eventually, they settled out of court and nobody knows what really went down between them. Basically, every year since 2009, Brown has been involved in some kind of violence. In April 2017, he allegedly attacked a club photographer for taking his picture. In that same year, his ex, Karushe Tran, filed a restraining order against him. According to her, Brown threatened her in text messages and said, Bitch, I will beat the shit out of you, and I promise I will make your life hell. Tran also claimed that Brown punched her twice and threw her down some stairs too, but the police never got involved. Somehow, Chris Brown kept on dropping hits and working with some of the biggest artists in the world during everything. His fans have stuck by him no matter what, even though it's clear that he's a dangerous dude who still hasn't handled his issues. He was sued for sexual assault in 2018 and settled out of court in 2020, and then he was accused of hitting another woman at his house in LA. A criminal report was filed against him over it, but Brown was never arrested for the attack. Brown has avoided doing any serious time because of his status in the industry, and it doesn't look like that's going to be changing anytime soon. His last album dropped in 2022 and debuted at number 4 on the Billboard 200. He's not moving as many units as he did before he attacked Rihanna, but obviously he has enough fans who don't care about his dark past to keep his career going. It seems like Chris Brown is untouchable in the court system, but it took him over two decades to bring down R. Kelly, so you never know what'll happen. It's pretty clear that he hasn't changed at all since 2009, so it's probably only a matter of time before he catches a charge that sticks.